Well, good morning, everyone. So good to have you uh, join us for our coffee hour this morning. Abby Gray um, is going to be the one presenting, and she's going to be giving an overview of the District Conservation Technician Program and letting us know the ins and outs and how conservation districts in good standing can become involved in that program. And so the way we've kind of worked with Abby in the past, if you have questions, feel free to drop those in the chat. Um, or raise your hand and we could address those um, during the presentation as we go. And then we'll also have time for questions at the end. And so that said, I will go ahead and turn it over to you, Abby. Thank you, Kayla. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this coffee hour about the DCT program, probably my favorite of the grant programs at CSCB. Um, you all should have seen an email this morning. The 2024 applications have been released on the website. Um, they are open this year to both re-enrolling and new applicants. Um, so I'm going to give a little history on the DCT program for anybody who's new on the call, um, not familiar with how it works, and then we'll jump into um, kind of how, how it works once you get a grant. So um, the District Conservation Technician Program, you're going to hear it called DCT Program, probably more than anything else. Um, this is a really unique partnership between um, the Colorado State Conservation Board, the NRCS, um, as well as the local districts. So these positions are funded 80% um, by the grant and 20% by the local district. And that um, kind of mirrors the time that the DCT will have to spend on different projects. So um, the, the DCTs are required to spend 80% of their time on farm bill related work within the NRCS office on the local um, level. And then 20% of their time can be utilized for whatever technical needs that the local conservation district has. Um, so whether that be a technical project like a matching grant project that you need that help with, or educational programs that your district is running or um, other, other technical needs that your local landowners need, um, that DCT can fill that void. The one limitation is that the district technician is not allowed to do administrative work for the district. So they're not allowed to fill out their own reimbursement forms or their own um, reporting forms or anything of the statutory compliance side of things for the district but they are allowed to do any technical work that you may need done with that 20% time. That being said, the DCT program is open to all um, conservation districts that are within good statutory compliance with the state. Um, the way that the DCT program works is you're gonna see on the website that there is a deadline. So this year, the application deadline is August 25th. Um, that deadline really pertains to re-enrolling districts or districts that intend to start their DCT in the 2024 contract year. Um, it is open year round to any districts that want to add a DCT kind of on an immediate basis or kind of a quicker timeline than waiting till January. Um, the grants do run on a January through December 31st timeline. Um, so the applications that are open now will start January 1st, unless it's a new district that requests to have a uh, contract sooner than that. So that being said, we'll kind of roll through. I have a little bit of a structured presentation here that just goes through all of the documents you're gonna see online and what they're used for and some of the guidance. Um, but again, if you have questions throughout the presentation, just stop me. I am happy to go kind of off topic and answer anything that needs to be answered for you guys. Um, so again, you'll find all of the DCT documents, guidelines, um, deadlines, things like that on the district operations website. Um, <clears throat> and you'll just click into this little DCT icon here. One of the things that you're going to see, um, it's always in a colored bar on the district operations website, is the grant operational materials. I always suggest looking through those if you're someone who is looking at adding a DCT and you've never had one before. Um, they're more just guidance on like what the year is gonna look like managing that employee, um, different guidance on hiring, um, performance reviews, other topics that come up pretty commonly um, when the district is hiring an employee. One thing I will mention is that the DCT is an employee of the conservation district. So the hiring process um, is a little bit different than if you were just hiring a district manager or another employee that isn't in a partnership. 
you will need to include your local NRCS um, regional team lead in the interview process and in the selection process to the extent that they make sure that the employee that you hire is capable of the technical work needing to be done for Farmville. Um, but once that employee is hired, it is the responsibility of the district to manage that employee. So um, the district is in charge of any performance plans, um, any corrective action that needs to be taken. They're in charge of kind of the employee agreement between the DCT and the district, things of that nature. Again, you'll find all of those operational materials in kind of a colored bar on the district operations website. Those include things like contract guidelines, um, the forms that you're going to use throughout the year. So the reimbursement forms, the activity tracking forms. We'll talk a little bit more about that in here in a few minutes um, and the quarterly reporting forms. Um, one other thing I will mention is because this is a three way partnership um, with a federal partner, you do have to have an active and up to date DUNS number. I they're called federal ID numbers now. Um, so that is something if your district is not up to date on that, you'll want to work with the CSTB office to get all of the information you need to get into your account or to access your account if you've been locked out and get everything up to date there. We'll jump right into the guidelines. So these are what the contract guidelines look like. Again, these are kind of most frequently asked questions. I will say they're pretty in depth. Um, they've been added to a lot over the years. Um, with common things that come up about managing an employee, um, trying to do that hiring, advertising, um, if something comes up, whether there's disciplinary action needed, how to kind of build your um, employee agreement and things to think about when you're considering hiring a DCT employee. Um, another neat sheet that you'll find up on the district operations website is some key reminders. Um, and this includes deadlines. So much like the matching grant program, the quarterly reporting deadlines do not change year to year. So um, they are due April 15th, July 15th, October 15th, and then January 15th of the next year, every year. So unlike the matching grant program, there is no final report associated with the DCT program just for quarterly reports throughout the year. Um, the other thing that uh, you'll want to keep in mind is we do require submission of your employee's W-2 to the CSCB office um, at the end of January following the contract year. Um, we just keep those on file so that if we're ever audited for the DCT program, those are easily accessible and um, we can work our way through that audit without reaching out to um, districts and trying to get that information. Another common form you're gonna use once you have a contract is the reimbursement form. So reimbursements for the DCT program can either be requested on a monthly or quarterly basis. That is 100% up to the district and what works best for your finances. Um, I think right now we're about 50-50 with the districts requesting quarterly versus monthly reimbursements. And this is what that form looks like. So it's a it looks pretty simple, but it can get complicated um, when you're trying to get all the match to work out. Um, I have some notes, so to access it, it's an Excel file. So once you click on it on the website, it'll auto download. You'll go into your downloads folder and open it from there. Um, you will want to make sure you click this little icon up here to enable editing, or you'll get really frustrated because it won't allow you to enter anything. Um, it is a locked PDF or a locked Excel file. So the yellow spaces are the only ones that are going to allow you to type into them. Um, I do have a couple of districts that need a little bit more space to put in their categories, um, and I'm happy to unlock the form and add, add lines and things like that. So just reach out to the office if you guys need that done. Um, so you'll want to put in um, the district name up in the upper left-hand corner, as well as the dates. So that's where you'd put, whether it's monthly or quarterly, um, for the to and from dates for expenditures, you wanna make sure that you put the technicians names on there. Sometimes that changes throughout the year um, and we do utilize that information when we're entering for payment. So just make sure whoever is getting paid in that time period, their name is on there. Um, and one of the things that we will reject forms for is not including the number of hours paid. So we have to report out on that number. Um, so that is a very important thing to make sure you include when you're submitting your reimbursement forms. 
Um, here's some other quick notes. And again, um, if you guys need access to these photos and things like that, just feel free to reach out to the office. We can always send them to you. Um, sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they're just confusing. So um, let me know if you guys need that. But the upper portion of the form is for your reimbursement side. So that's what you're asking for money back for. Um, and we've put in the big categories that we typically see on every single reimbursement form in the white. So those are kind of locked in salary, fringe benefits, unemployment insurance, workers' compensation insurance. Then it's open to other categories. So um, things like training, cell phone, auto liability insurance, um, some districts have payroll, um, things of that nature. You can always add in the categories that you guys need. Some districts break those out very specifically and some districts don't. We really don't have um, rules per se about how you break it out as long as in the case of an audit, you have everything kind of sorted out and um, easily understandable to you. Um, one of the things that has come up in recent years is mileage. So mileage is not a reimbursable expense on the DCT contracts. And the reason for that is that in our agreement with NRCS, um, the DCTs are allowed to utilize federal vehicles to travel to trainings or out in the field to work with landowners, things of that nature. So we really expect those vehicles to be made available to you. Um, if for some reason they are not and your DCT needs to utilize their own vehicle to drive somewhere, it is considered a match item. So you can include it on the match side um, of your form and kind of decrease the district's requirement there, but um, we are not allowed to reimburse it as an item. Um, the other thing that we just suggest kind of like the matching grant program is just keeping track of what your um, initial application budget looked like and trying to keep your expense categories similar. It just makes tracking and in the case of an audit, everything really simple and clean and easy to understand on both sides. Um, the one thing that the form does do to kind of help you guys out is down at the very bottom in the blue line, um, it auto calculates your match requirement based on what you enter as a reimbursement amount. So it's kind of a nice little double check um, to make sure that you, you meet the required amount that you need to with your match for each form. We do check that with the matching or with the DCT program a little bit more closely than we do the matching grants. Um, so we do, if the form for some reason doesn't have enough match to meet the reimbursement request, you will get an email from the CSCB grant specialist inquiring about that. Um, we've tried really hard to work with districts in the past. If it's something that you foresee next month, um, some big expense coming through that you're gonna make up for that difference in match, we'll usually work with you to go ahead and pay on the reimbursement, um, but we do need explanation in order to do that. Um, these are very closely monitored as far as whether or not we're meet, meeting our match requirement. And then you'll just sign off with the date and the person who, um, who is filling out the form. The other thing that the program allows is an administrative match amount. So every year we have that set. I believe this year it's $1,169 again. Um, that works out to about $97.41 a month um, that the NRCS has approved for match that um, is really just the administrative time to fill out the forms and, and do the work that is required to manage the DCT program. Now I will kind of back up a little bit. I think I forgot to mention this, but um, unlike the matching grant program, the DCT program is a cash match only. So that's where that administrative match is a little bit different and kind of nice that the NRCS steps in and allows us to utilize that. On the form here about, oh, just above the bottom, you'll see these big boxes that outline some of the activities the admin or the district manager or whoever's administering the grant might be doing. We just ask you to kind of fill in where the time allotment for the month was utilized. And that's just our way, again, if we get audited of explaining where that match is coming from. Um, there's also some other helpful tabs on the reimbursement form, some instructions that goes through a little bit more in detail what I just discussed, what each line means and what we're looking for there. Um, there's also an example of what a reimbursement form might look like um, and a calculator. And that's just kind of a spreadsheet that you can utilize to plug in the expenses that you have in a month and it'll help break them out for you, make the form a little faster and easier to fill out. Um, and this is what that calculator tab looks like. The next thing that's required, so um, outside of making sure that you've met your match requirement, we also require that each reimbursement request is accompanied by something called an activity tracking sheet. 
Um, the activity tracking sheet is to monitor what NRCS related activities your DCT has done throughout the month. Um, and we, they're funny sheets and they can be a little bit encumbersome and frustrating. They do have to be signed off by NRCS, um, but they're very important for CSCB when we're reporting on our DCT grant back to um, the NRCS. We utilize those numbers to justify kind of the work that's being done by our DCTs and show the worth of that agreement within Colorado. So those are required. You will have your reimbursement rejected if you haven't included an activity tracking sheet when you submit for reimbursement. This is what that looks like. Um, one of the common questions that we get is, are activities tracked by number of hours spent doing them or number of items completed? And they are by activities completed, not by hours. So um, that means for contract administration, it's per contract. For um, assisting a producer, it's per interaction with that producer, um, or contacting would be per interaction, assisting would be per project done with a producer. So um, keep that in mind when you're filling these out. This is also an Excel file, so it's really easy to just type your numbers in. It auto adds everything up at the bottom, and you just get it signed off by NRCS and submit it with your reimbursement. Again, it has a second tab for instructions that just explains what each of those categories is and what activities would fall under each of those. And again, if you have any questions about any of these forms, um, you are always welcome to reach out to the CSCB grant specialist. Um, we are happy to jump on the phone or a call and um, help you guys through that. The next reporting form, or I guess contract form you're gonna have is that quarterly report form. Um, it is also an Excel file. So again, only the yellow places are places that you can type into, um, but this is just to track what activities have been done. It helps us on our reporting side um, back to the NRCS to track where the time is being spent and kind of what the employees are doing out in the field for the DCT program. One of the other requirements, there's a couple other requirements I'm gonna mention here um, when it comes to the DCT contracts is that the um, district technicians are expected to attend 80% of the district's board meetings. Um, so we do track that. You'll see that over on the right-hand side of this form, um, whether or not they've gone to the board meetings throughout the quarter. The other thing that is required is that there are two publicity efforts throughout the year um, pertaining to the DCT program. So whether that be a news article highlighting the work that your DCT is doing within your area or educational outreach programs, a lot of districts have um, their DCT speak at their annual meetings um, and reach out to landowners that way. We just really want to see that that is being highlighted in your area for um, the good work that those DCTs are doing for your district and your landowners. And again, it has a second tab that just explains what each of the areas is on the form and what we kind of are looking for to be filled in there. We also have some helpful tools, much like the matching grant program on our district operations site. Those include optional tracking tools. Um, and you'll find those at the very bottom of the website. Those are match tracking tools and um, we just provide those as kind of a resource. I know sometimes that's like the big scary thing about the grants is trying to figure out where all the match is coming from and where all the money is going and it can get very convoluted very quickly. So we just provide some resources. You are not required to use them. They're just there for your benefit. I will say if you guys have things that as you manage contracts, you're like, you know, this would be really helpful if CSCB could provide us some kind of tracking tool or a tool to help us keep track of what's going on. Um, reach out to CSCB and ask them for those things because um, we like to build new creative things and try to help the districts make contracting easier. Um, so we are more than happy to dive into that with you guys and, and give you some tools that are helpful. This is what those two um, tracking forms look like. So again, they're just very simple Excel files that are just kind of suggestions on how you might keep track of um, your match for this program. Now we're going to dive into the fun part, the applications. So again, the 2024 applications are out. They are due back um, August 25th for re-enrolling districts. And then new districts have a choice. You can either meet that August 25th deadline for a contract that will start in January of 2024, or if you're looking to hire a DCT a little bit quicker, um, you can apply at any point in time for that position. And Abby, and 
Oh, yes. sorry, real quick. We have a Go couple ahead. questions in the chat. If you want to get to those first before jumping into the application materials, I feel like that could be a good time for that. You bet. Thank you for catching that. Yeah. Um, so we'll start off with, can a district pay their DCT as a 1099 employee? No, um, they cannot. They have to be a W-2 employee. Um, I can dive a little bit more into that if you'd like to have like a more in-depth conversation about that, but no, they cannot be a 1099 employee, just the nature of um, their work with the NRCS and the way that that agreement is written, they have to be a W-2. Um, let's see here. Do you envision the calculator ever being updated to autofill the reimbursement form when you enter the numbers? Mitch, that's an excellent um, idea. I love that actually. And something I will mention to the team about looking into to see if that's a possibility. That would be really neat and simplify things. So thanks for that. Um, do the DCTs have to attend 50% or 80% of the board meetings? I thought you said 80. I will double check that. Maybe I have the wrong number stuck in my head, but I do believe it's 80%. And that's a great question. So I will dive into that before I'll pull up the guidelines before I get off the call today and make sure that I verify that for you, Mitch, but I do believe it's 80%. And I think that's it, Abby, for the questions. Okay, awesome. Thanks for asking such great questions. I love it. I love the suggestions too. Um, so the application materials you will usually find just above or just below the operational materials on the website. I believe this year they're just above it. Um, and they'll have quite a few different documents in there. So they have things to help you fill out the application, like guidelines, program outline, key reminders, just information to know what you're kind of getting yourself into with a DCT employee. And then they have the actual forms. And again, there's two separate applications for the DCT program. There's a re-enrolling application, which is meant for districts who already have a DCT or DCT employees um, to extend their contract essentially for another year. And then there's a new application and that's for a district that has not historically had a DCT. Um, so typically the way that that works is new districts applying to the DCT program go through an approval process. It's pretty simple compared to the matching grant. It's not a review process. It's just in a kind of a hierarchy of approvals that goes to the state office. They work with the area conservationist to work with their local RTLs to decide the need base. Um, if there is a need for an employee in that area, then that gets approved and it comes back to the CSCB and then it's a budget question. So um, then we pull your budget form and make sure that essentially CSCB and the, the contract in whole can't afford for your contract to move forward. As long as those two things are checked off and approved, then we start the contracts process. Now I will um, warn you, sometimes the contracts process can be a little bit time consuming in the sense that um, it depends on the time of year and how much our business operations department at the Department of Ag has going on in contracts, um, how quickly those get moved. Sometimes it's a month and we can get a contract back out to the district. We try very hard to meet that deadline because it's important to get these employees hired and the hiring process can take time as well. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, that can push a couple of months, just again, depending on the workload that's happening in business operations. Um, I will say the department's been really good in the last couple of years at prioritizing our DCT contracts and getting them done rather quickly. Um, so I hope that's something that continues into the future um, so that we can get those employees out and, and going as quickly as possible. Other things to think about. So both applications will need a budget template, and that's just essentially going through and deciding how much an employee is going to cost um, and making sure that that we have that information when we're looking at um, approving applications. Um, one of two things I'll, I'll talk about, the budget template can be a little bit scary. If you're a new district, you've never really budgeted that way for an employee, really don't know what they're supposed to make. There's a lot of big, scary questions um, and you don't want to get it wrong kind of thing. A couple of resources I can provide to you, um, working with your RTL to decide what level employee is needed for the work being done in that area. That's my number one go-to when it comes to questions about how much an employee should make. Work with your local resource team lead um, or your area conservationist to decide what level of work needs to be completed, 
what kind of expertise and skill set that employee needs to have. They have a whole database of pay ranges for that, and they should be able to provide you kind of a generalized range of what that employee should make competitively within your area for the work being completed. When it comes to things like fringe benefits, um, insurances, things like that, um, SDA is a great resource for things like workers' compensation insurance, liability insurance. Um, they usually have some pretty good resources to help you guys figure out exactly what that might look like cost-wise. Um, a good number that we like to use when we're budgeting positions at the department is 40%. So adding 40% to what the base pay of an employee would be is usually a pretty safe bet um, to submit for a range of cost for that employee. Um, and then most of our districts already have an EFT form filed, and that's for electronic payment. Um, but if you're a new district and you're still receiving check payments, um, we really push districts to utilize EFT for employees um, in the DCT program because it just really speeds up how fast you're going to get paid by the state and get that money to reimburse your district for your employees' costs. So um, that form is also included on here for your guys' convenience. So application deadlines or guidelines, these are probably the most helpful form for new districts looking at the DCT program. Um, they go through and highlight um, the major portions of the contracting um, and the program in general and kind of help you go through that new application form questions one by one and figure out what information you need. I will warn you um, that both applications do require some heavy communication with NRCS as far as um, getting numbers for workload in the field offices. So make sure you plan ahead and don't um, cut yourself off too short on getting those applications in in August because you will have some back and forth with your um, local NRCS office. And this just goes through each of the categories you're gonna find on your application form. Um, and then we have another kind of two pager here that's just a program outline. Again, the major questions surrounding the DCT program, kind of the big picture things that you might need to know, um, kind of a fact sheet for lack of better words. There's some things in here for you guys um, information wise there. And then the budget templates. So again, it looks simple, but it can be scary and convoluted too. So um, we put in again, all the yellow areas you can type into. So you'll put your district name. We type in the contract year for you. Um, the white cells auto populate when you start typing in numbers. Um, and then we put the big categories that we usually see on a um, DCT application and then some lines for you to add other things that your district might be including in your employee contract. I can add lines to this as well. So feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions about that. Um, the top three lines sometimes cause some questions. So the very top line is gonna be the award requested. So that's 80% of the total cost you enter into this form for your employees. So make sure you're entering not what you wanna get paid by CSCB in the contract, but the full cost of what your employee is going to cost your district. Um, then it will tell you, it'll auto calculate how much your portion um, is going to be, and this form is a little bit old, so ignore the 25%, it is 20% now. Um, it'll tell you how much your match is going to be, and then it'll show that total amount or total cost for the DCT employee. And let's see, we had another question pop up, so I'm gonna address that very quickly before we move on. Um, for the district's budget and determining if they can afford a DCT, is there a maximum amount that you are looking for? <clears throat> That's a great question. So. As of right now, we don't limit um, how much you apply for in the DCT program as far as salary goes. We ask you to be competitive um, in your area and your district needs to be able to afford whatever the match for that position is. Um, but as of right now, we're not, we don't have a cap on how much you can ask for. Um, just keep in mind, it does come down to budget most of the time as far as whether or not we approve applications. So um, we just have to be able to afford it and you have to be able to afford it. Um, I hope that answers your question. Here. Yes, perfect. Um, the other thing that we would like um, you guys to consider as re-enrolling districts as you move from year to year is kind of adding some kind of cost of living um, raise into your next year's application or just considering that um, it is allowable. I think there's some confusion out there as to whether or not we allow that within the DCT program, and we absolutely do. Again, it comes down to can we afford it? Can you afford it? 
Um, but just consider that for your employees. A lot of our DCT employees have been around for a fair amount of time. Um, and we want to make sure that they're being taken care of too. So again, if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and then we'll kind of just show you some brief pictures here of what the applications themselves look like. Um, so this here is the re-enrolling application. So you're going to see kind of several categories in here. We look for previous year, current year, and future year projections. Um, these are a little more encumbersome than the new application just for that reason. Um, but those numbers really help us out when we have to go negotiate a new agreement with the NRCS and answer questions from Washington, D.C. about what this program is doing within the state of Colorado. So we do appreciate you taking the time to fill all this stuff out. I know it's a little encumbersome. Um, oh, I'll go back really quick here because it looks like the new application is over on the um, right hand side. And you'll see it also has several places to fill out. We really just ask for kind of why um, the numbers for why your NRCS office needs the help and kind of what you guys expect growth wise for the following year. And again, those application guidelines go through each of the questions one at a time and explain exactly what it is we're looking for in those. Um, they're really rather helpful. So I highly suggest looking through those um, pretty quickly if you're considering adding a DCT to your area and then reaching out to the office if you guys have any questions at all. Um, I also, sometimes there's a little disconnect between NRCS and the state. So if you have an uh, NRCS employee in your office that's confused and just needs more clarification, please tell them to reach out. We are more than happy to chat with them as well. Um, I actually rather enjoy those conversations. So um, feel free to, to communicate with the state office at any point in time with any questions or concerns that you guys have about the program. And then really that's all I had planned as far as the presentation. So I'll really open it up to you guys about any questions you have, um, clarifications you need about the program. Is there anything out there? It's quiet this morning. <laughs> yeah, any questions for Abby while we have her on the call? I do appreciate um, the kind of clarification on some of the outreach criteria. Um, I've gotten a couple of questions about that. So that was good information. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, of course. Yep. This is Bill Brenton. I have a question. Um, can STAR plus technical field activities be construed as farm bill activities or farm bill related? Typically, um, I believe the answer to that is no. That's a new question that's kind of situational at the moment um, as things change and NRCS gets more involved. But typically, the answer to that is no right now. Um, but that is something if you have specific plan in your area and NRCS is being involved, let's talk about that. Um, reach out to me or reach out to the grant specialist. Nikki Brinson, um, and let's start those conversations. Cause right now those are really um, one by one. I wish I had a general answer for that, but as the STAR Plus program grows and changes, the answer to those questions is going to change. Thank you. They definitely can utilize their 20% district time towards anything related to STAR Plus. That has been openly approved at this point in time. But as far as the farm bill related things, that's a little more situational. And really quick, Abby, um, you said you were going to loop back and check on the 50 or 80% of yes. attending board meetings. And so, um, but while you do that, I know we have a couple of folks on the call. Um, and if you don't want to respond or kind of share feedback, that's totally fine. But I know that their districts are involved in the DCT program right now. Um, if, let's see, I think I saw... Debbie with Larimer or even Mitch with Jefferson to share kind of um, a few words about their involvement in the DCT program um, or kind of advice for new districts that are looking to be involved. Um, kind of good to hear what um, you all are going through and that wisdom could benefit other potential participants. This is Mitch. One thing that is really good about the DCT program is how fast you get paid. Uh, 
there are some grants we get paid in months, <laughs> sometimes six months. And, you know, Abby and the group there, we usually get paid within a few weeks of submitting our reimbursement form, which is really helpful and good for the cash flow. Awesome. Thanks, Mitch. Sorry, I'm very quickly trying to track this down for you, Mitch. Give me just a moment here. And while Abby's looking that up, any other questions for Abby? And that's okay, Debbie. I see your chat that you can't get your mic to work. Um, but maybe folks will reach out for questions or kind of tap you for input. Um, Kayla, with Abby leaving, will uh, our regional person be the contact until you get that position filled for the DCT grant? It will be Nikki filling in for the, I think Nikki and Raquel are gonna tag team the matching grants in the DCTs for now. So any questions you have, either direct them to the grants email or Nikki, and then um, Raquel is gonna step in and help with payments. Um, make sure you guys continue to get those in a timely fashion. So I think they're tag teaming it just a little bit, but when in doubt, just email the grants email because someone is checking that and they will get back to you if you have any questions or concerns. And the field staff are always a wonderful resource. So they know how to get in touch with all those people too. Kayla, this is Debbie. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, yay. Okay. Um, I just want to say our districts have done the DCT program for several years. Um, we currently have four DCTs, and it is by far the best grant program that we utilize. Um, we we run about $4 million to our districts with various different grants. And I have to say, as the person who has to manage all of the paperwork and the reimbursements and the applications, it is amazing. It is super simple. Um, as someone mentioned earlier, we do get the reimbursements back so quickly. And if I ever have any questions, it's been great. Abby, Nikki, everyone is available to help. So I have to say, this is by far my favorite program. Great. Thanks, Debbie. Um, it's always great to hear kind of feedback of districts who are actively involved um, and how their experience with the program is. So thank you. I do have the answer for you, Mitch. It is 80%. Apologize that took so long. <laughs> And it looks like we did have one more question, Abby, in the chat for you. Let me just pull that up. On the quarterly report, public relations, public says 50% minimum. I think maybe that's an error, um, Fianna. So let me clarify that with Cindy and Nikki. Um, because our guidelines say 80% and just make sure, and I will send an email out to all the districts before I leave on Friday, making sure everybody is clear on which of that it is. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Okay, excellent. Thanks for that, Abby. All right, any last questions? One last call for questions. And if not, we will go ahead and wrap up for today. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, and thank you, Abby, for presenting. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Have a good rest of your day, everyone.